All right. Um, this hand is risky. I have a two drop. If I draw a land, I have a three drop that can equip. So I think I play. If I draw a swamp, I just get there, right? Miss on the hello. Planes go. Yes, next turn, playing Dawnbringer Cleric. Again, that card is a sleeper for sure. I don't think people are playing him as often as they should. Destroy target enchantment comes up a lot more often than you think. And uh, <laughs> look at me hover over. <laughs> give, me, give me swamp one time. Swamp one time. Got there. Yeah, so the debate here is play armor versus Gloomstalker, and I think it's correct to play Gloomstalker. And the reason being is because if I spend all of my turns, let's say I don't draw a land next turn, so I play plate armor, right? Plate armor, and then uh, equip on the 1-3. Well, if he has a removal for it, then I've spent two turns doing nothing. And that's really risky, so I don't agree with the plate armor. Now, if you've been watching, he just improvised weaponry, my 2-3. I'm really thinking that he thought that it did 3 damage like Dragon's Fire. So, I've made that mistake myself, thinking that it's 3 damage, but it's not. It's not like Burning Hands here, which I don't agree with. He just used 2... <laughs> <laughs> Two removal spells on Gloomstalker, and now I just replay the Gloomstalker. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing right now. Uh, so, it's kind of funny. I think his plan was to use the treasure to play Hobgoblin Captain. And imagine if he had done that, this Precipitous Drop would not be big enough to kill it. So you have a, a 5 three or if back to a three one keep the swamp on top and then you know swing all but really shouldn't have swung with the one three and now if you don't hit your land you're kind of out of place so yeah he i he did what's it's called um or he made the mistake of falling into what's called the sunk cost fallacy. And if you don't know what that is, it's not an economic term where you think, oh, I have invested so much money into making this thing happen. So therefore I need to invest more money into it because you know all of the previous money that I've invested into it must pay off. And that's just a good way of getting trapped and your previous mistakes. So if, uh, if you do something that was a mistake, you just gotta live with it and say, okay, well, what should I do given current circumstances? Not given, oh, I just used a removal spell and it, he had a trick or I completely misread it and I made a mistake. You just gotta, you gotta just, sometimes you make mistakes and move on. You know, a computer would not look at a mistake and be like, well, I just made this mistake and now I gotta analyze this and play appropriately or play differently now because I made this mistake and now I gotta be more efficient or play differently because of the mistake. Now he, the computer would just like, okay, given that you've made this play, these are the best moves. I think uh, I've made the point clear enough. But it, it is a tough thing to to get yourself out of, especially if you get tilted by it. Now, someone that makes a lot of mistakes and has made tons of mistakes. I mean, I didn't attack for the win with Baneslayer Angel before, so I mean, I just didn't attack. I've thought something had flying because it had wings in the picture, or they were in the clouds. 
So you just <laughs> you just go with the flow, okay? Here, um, going into the dungeon, putting a plus one, plus one counter on the one three seems good here. You swing all, he can't block. I mean, if he does, he loses a two two. You could even swing with the one one, but he would just block the one one. He's not blocking anyway, so. I don't like putting the, the plus one, plus one counter on the Gloom Stalker. I feel like if I do that, that just puts a already good card that's possibly going to be uh killed anyway um a target for removal so he just gets that much more value if he somehow kills it you know like let's say he has power word kill here or whatever it is um and he just uses it on the gloom stalker super good I mean, that's instant speed. You could have waited. It's not a sorcery. I mean, it doesn't matter. The box of 3 3, takes 3, 4, 5, he goes to 1, but that Pegasus makes it 6, so. I don't know if he just gave up before or after he saw the Pegasus, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, on to game 2. Yeah, that's a great hand. I play Evolving Wilds, get Swamp here. A lot of people, for some reason, really emphasize not using Evolving Wilds till their opponent's turn, and I just, I don't care about that. It's not going to make any difference if your opponent knows, oh, he's playing Swamps, you know? I mean, here I'll sure, I'll, I'll not tell them that I'm playing Black-White, because it could be relevant, but... Turn late on the white. I mean, I'm still going to play it here, but it makes it awkward. Had I played white last turn, I could have played played armor this turn. And then, you know, he has Plundering Barbarian and really gets me, but still. This monster's a pretty good card. I'm just going to venture into the dungeon here. No attack. He's got tons of artifacts to kill, too. Just gonna scry. I need a land. So if there is a land, I guess I keep it, but then again. Yeah, I need the land. I have Priest of Ancient Lore to help out, so. Yeah, that Rust Monster's doing a lot of work here. My plan is to play Black Dragon on it. Or draw. Um Precipitous drop. The only thing I can do, really. Draw the land. I could venture and make a treasure. Apparently that's what I do. Yeah. I don't think a goblin token really helps here. No attacks, he would just sack the treasure, kill my vet, uh, veteran dungeoneer. Yeah, so if I draw land here, I, I kill his 2 1. Fire Singer is not enough. Could boot speed it, but no, that doesn't help you. He, he could get in, but I would just trade. Because these guys back here aren't really doing anything. The Valor Singer would be doing something. Fate's reversal back the blight is or white is not what I want to be doing, so priest of ancient lore. Yeah. And then plate armor equip is not possible. I don't have enough mana. I mean I could, but not worth. I'd have to use a treasure, then I would have to um draw two lands rather than just one to play my black dragon because once i play my black dragon then unless i fate spree's reversal it back i have plenty of time to to replay it or draw another land 
to refill from the treasure. Alright, so he drew the land. Now it's Black Dragon. And I'm sure he's got, you know, what's the sack card? I get the Rust Monster. Deadly Dispute. There it is. Now I can get in. It's amazing how that one card was preventing so much damage. You know? What is he gonna do? Like, all he needs to sack one treasure. I can't get through. So, really good thing that I had Black Dragon in my hand. Eye of the Beholder. Okay. I mean, it's still instant speed, so I don't know why people are playing their instant speed spells on their turn. Am I going to do pump it? It's minus 11, minus 11. I might plate armor equip. Allow me to make that mistake. You can get in for first strike damage. You can get in for a lot, actually. You can get in for eight. I think he deliberates a lot here and then swings both for eight. Tries to race me. But there just is no racing here. He swings for eight. I swing for eight as well. He's at 14, I'm at 21. No. It's a 5-1, I'm playing black, white. Your entire play re revolves around the Hobgoblin, Hobgoblin Captain. Also, I can uh, keep back Priest of Ancient Lore to chump. Or whatever I play, I can chump with. So, I don't think the attack here is good. Granted... Blocking a 3-4 isn't good either, but... You know, what else are you going to do? You're not winning the race, so... I mean, you could swing for 3 with the Valor Singer. I guess he already made that call. Teleportation Circle, I don't think... Well, I guess it could be relevant. Because I got Veteran Dungeoneer. Never mind. And I have Priest of Ancient Lore. The draw cards. Yeah, it's all really good. <laughs> Which do you do? <laughs> I mean, I guess you do Dungeoneer so you can complete the dungeon. Draw a card sort of thing. But... Okay. Uh, plan is to play Teleportation Circle. Swing all... Venger uh, into the dungeon and why did you keep that back? And then give a minus four, minus zero. Yeah, I'm. I don't know why I didn't attack for the 3-4 here. I was clearly thinking about something, though. I was, like, worried about... some sort of haste? I really don't know. Because <laughs> I would still have the 3-4 back. <laughs> Aww. Check for traps, get rid of my black dragon. But, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I definitely should have swung for three there. So. Okay. Opponent goes first, but I have Priest of Ancient Lore, Veteran, Dungeoneer, and a Precipitous Drop, and four lands. Okay. So I remember this game. Uh, at least the first turn, play Evolving Wilds, and actually wait for some reason. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be tricky, like people. <laughs> Good game. Uh, there's no good response to good game. Yeah, play the uh, swamp. 
don't give them information about the planes. Now, do you play Fangblade here, or do you just draw the card? I don't have any sort of... Um, what was I saying? Uh, he hasn't played anything, so... I guess I play Fing Blade here because then you can precip this drop. Uh, yeah, that doesn't do it. However, uh, I think I would trade here. He probably wants his treasure, so let's venture into the dungeon. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely take plate armor. Although we have enough, let's create a goblin token. Enough lands, that is. Although we do have a uh, plate armor coming up, so that would allow me to play equip. I think it's fine. You can't attack with a hoarding ogre now, so definitely should have traded. I mean, I would have traded with a Hoarding Ogre, but he could have um, a double red spell in his hand. Who, who knows? Maybe he has Meteor Swarm. I mean, how, we don't know. Plate Armor. Good card to draw. I would swing for three. Oh, getting in there, huh? Yeah, because Precipitous Drop. I'm okay with that. Goblin and Precipitous drop for this. All day. Then I venture into the dungeon. Plus one, plus one counter on the big four is fine. The one uh, life drain doesn't matter, so. You'd rather have the opportunity for this to be awesome. I mean, obviously, you can deal the five damage to it. Again, and win. But. I guess people really want things to... I don't know. I, I want to guarantee that it dies. How am I going to pump it with black-white? I guess maybe I can... Fix reversal to draw two cards. Sure. Then you don't have to roll. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if that's necessary to equip, but... Does get an extra three damage. So it doesn't change the clock though, so that's why I don't like it. I'd rather play Priest of Ancient Lore. Get in there and then um, swing both. I can put plate armor on the Priest of Ancient Lore. Start swinging with that. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Or even Gloomstalker. Priest of Ancient Lore Gloomstalker, I think, is a better player. Very suspicious. I take a lot here. Okay. Well, let's need a life. Sure. Yeah, get in there. Blocking. Oh my. Really misplayed by, uh... Wow. Really misplayed by... Playing the priest first. The fact that he didn't kill the priest also is suspicious, but... So... Uh... Each player loses one life is actually probably the play here. I was worried about him, though he just did uh, treachery my big guy with outright more reason, so I assume that he had a um, Or killing me. I wanted to get out of range. That's why I didn't play my land, by the way. And then, yeah. This is too live. Pretty good. And we're gonna play Gloomstalker. That's gonna be 
good with radar armor. Um, Priest of Ancient Lord comes back with this. Bang. So good. Um, probably should have switched over the plate armor, honestly. Because now he can double block. I mean, it probably doesn't matter, but... I have hits reversal. If need be. And I could do it now. There's no way for me to make him lose a life. And that's why I should have... I should have realized that. Okay. If I use face reversal... I'm sorry. If I use... Uh, the, the minus one life for the zombie ogre is really big. So that was a pretty big oversight. It's one of those tough ones to see though, so if you missed it, don't worry about it that much, but if you did not miss it and you saw the play, good for you. Good job. See, that's the other card, the press loyalty. That's what I was worried about. And I think maybe gaining that one or two life might have been relevant. I mean, I just take the damage here. It doesn't matter. He's at one. That was his last card. Just get on here and good game. Good game. Good for him. Nice. Gold tier. Yay. Gold tier four. Made it to plat tier last time. Three and O. Oh. On to game four with Or Organeer. Oh. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't remember to hit on pause. Because usually I pause there and then uh it'd be easier to cut things out. But uh didn't unpause. So this is the state we're at. Basically we play draw go for a while until I keep played the four two that comes in, I precipitous dropped it, and then I played a priest of ancient lore, we played Lance and then played Draw Go. Uh yeah, Reaper's Talisman on that seems okay. Start getting that damage in, and then death touch for the seven six. Really good. I mean, I win this race. As long as uh, Fangblade survives. Uh, the only problem is the shortcut seeker can get in right now. I'm gonna bounce the 2 2. Yeah, I would bounce the 2 2 here. I wanna take 7. Can't double block. That's the unfortunate thing. How close am I to venturing into the dungeon here? Okay. Um You could plate armor attack with the white, and then he takes No. I mean it's eight, so the next turn it's lethal, but you just chump with the shortcuts here. I yeah, I agree with this attack. A swing with the white. And then Gloomstalker. Next turn is going to swing with a air cult elemental, which means we can get in there with our Fang Blade if we choose. Swamp is not great, but it works. I think just getting in there with the Blight's fine, but he's probably going to block with the shortcuts here. At this point, get out of the way. So, I want to play the Pegasus, put it on the Fang Blade. And if need be, I can just chump the 7 6. I mean, I can even take 7, but. And then the Pegasus can hold the arm, uh, the plate armor. I really want to get 
to the end of the dungeon because I have two Gloom Stalkers. So it's really important to me to uh, get in there. Now, I could have only equipped the uh, Fang Blade, right? And uh, got in there for five. Yeah, let's equip the Reaper's Talisman onto the Pegasus. Because that's what we're going to be swinging with next turn. He's got removal for it, he's got removal for it. I mean... Pegasus. Mm, see? I don't agree with that. I put it on the Pegasus because that's the only one that's going to be attacking next turn, right? Plate Armor Pegasus. Get in there for seven. Jelly's a really good card. I'm not even anywhere close to completing the dungeon. So. Yeah. Uh, Dungeoneer is not that great here. But yeah, plate armor. Uh, Breeze of Ancient Lore is fine. But please put it on. There you go. Not gaining life. I have not done that. Uh, chomping for five there seems fine. Because jelly should start doing work. You get in there with the seven six and the jelly and keep back the two five to block the other guys. Seems good. 